Tim needed my help getting this base to Australia. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. That's right, I got one for our bass fans out here. So I don't think I've had a Music Man bass. I've seen them, I know that they have some nice heritage to them. This particular one is supposed to be a limited edition of 40. So let's go ahead and check it out. They call this one Ruby Punch. So it's supposed to be kind of like a sparkling burgundy type-esque finish. It's actually quite nice here in person. We've just got one humbucker, so is this a very simple bass guitar? No, we've got an active EQ system here. That's kind of the claim to fame for the Stingray Music Man bass. This took the title as the first four-string electric bass with onboard active EQ system all the way back in 1976. Their other unique feature is the three-in-one headstock, so three of your tuners are on the top, one on the edge. Kind of helps make them smaller, not quite as neck divey, I would imagine. But besides this really cool sparkly finish, we also have something else fun back here. A, a barcode. <laughs> What's up with that? Must have something to do with the factory. Thankfully, it's just a little window cling and that outline went away. But check out our neck. That's what we're liking on this one. Nicely, heavily figured. Wow, that is a really good example. However, I am noticing this is different from the one that I had initially ordered. Looking at the photos they had sent me, yeah, this is definitely not the exact same one. That other neck had some interesting figuring to it and a lot of wood grain, whereas this one that we're documenting today is incredibly moving. Has a little bit of mineral streakage, but it's way more flamey. I would argue this neck is way better because the body is nice and glossy, but the neck is one of those thin satin finishes. And a lot of time, flame figuring doesn't move as much when you have a satin finish. So yeah, that's a really nice piece of lumber. I think we lucked out there. So it's just kind of a cool bass. I'm not gonna say I'm the best bass player in the world, but we can check it out anyway, see what it's all about. Besides just our bass here, what else do they include? Well, we already saw this little sticker thing on the back, but we also get this really nice silky feeling bag that has the case keys in it, a welcome to the EBMM family pamphlet, a sticker and some cleaning cloths, a diagram showing you how to replace the battery of your active EQ system, a nice diagram that explains your controls, volume, treble, mid, and bass, some setup tools, and then inside here, we do have an official COA. I was kind of scared ordering this because I wasn't sure, is this actually that one of 40? Because it didn't say anything about it in the dealer's description, but it appears to be right here on the serial number. So this is number 10 of 40. So I'd say that's a pretty good number. But all that brand new was $3,499. So this is not a budget friendly base. It's a fancy boy. So let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs before we get to that playing sample. Inside the Stingray base, let's learn its secrets. So first off, let's talk about this pick guard. It's just a doofy egg shape. Once you notice that, you can't ever unsee it. It's a perloid material, multiply, white, black, perloid. And then we do have a 35032 written on the back. I suppose when you take it off, it starts to look like an Ibanez base, so maybe that's why they did it, to create an identity. Now let's check out our humbucker here. So we've got eight exposed pole pieces, but look at that underneath it. It almost appears to be like a, a PCB constructed pickup. I don't really know anything about this stuff, but I'm sure it has something to do with the active band EQ system. It's kind of cool. Usually stuff like this gets epoxy coated so you don't get to see it. Our cavity itself says 107. Then we have some production stuff on a sticker. Our bridge is Music Man branded. And we've got four individual saddles for each string. And then you set your intonation using these screws down here. And it is a top loader bridge. And that secures to the top using three screws. And underneath there, if you take it off, you get your grounding wire. To recap, this is your master volume control. And then these are your active controls. So this one is for treble cut and boost. There is a little notch right here where it stops and then you have to forcibly move it to the next section. So that controls cutting the treble and adding to it. Next one is your mid cut or boost and bass cut and or boost. But if our pick guard is an egg, this is a chrome banana. But here's what all that looks like underneath here. It's all on a PCB system. That's what's funny about bassists. They love and embrace stuff like this. Whereas guitarists, you start throwing that on your guitar and they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> At least traditionalists are. So my first impression of this thing on the workbench is they use a lot of screws. Look at that. That is nine screws to secure the pick guard and eight screws for your controls. I'm honestly surprised not to see a fourth screw for our bridge. 
This lighting kind of helps show the ruby punch finish. It just has a nice sparkle effect to it. It's not too in your face. It's actually a rather dark finish in person. So the more light you put on it, the more sparkly it becomes. Unfortunately, the B-roll shots were done on a kind of an overcast day, but it's just a nice subtle effect. I did notice some scratching on this straight out of the box with this long line right here feeling a little bit deeper. We have a roasted maple neck. It's not just the color. And then it's supposed to be an ebony fretboard. It's definitely one of those more streaky ebony boards. It looks a lot better now that I've conditioned it because when I took it straight out of the box, it was really dried out. But these are acrylic block inlays and it is a 22 fret base. And then I measure a 34 inch scale length. Here's the neck at the first fret and the 12th fret. It moves from almost like a U-ish shape to a C-shape. Could also just be that the neck gets really wide, so a C-shape becomes a little bit less extreme. I would say the neck is a little bit on the thinner side. However, it still has a little bit of meat to it. Definitely chunks up towards the 12th. Now we can take a look at our headstock. It's got the matching sparkling finish, and then again the three and one headstock style. And they utilize this giant string tree in the middle. Then we have our Music Man Stingray branding here. But you might be wondering, hey, how do we adjust the truss rod if we don't have access up here? Well, we actually have a truss rod wheel right there. So that makes it so easy. You don't have to take the neck off or anything like that. But now let's talk about the nut. It's kind of an interestingly compensated nut. So you have these rectangular cutouts around where the string goes on. You don't see that every day. But I like how the ebony board is covered over in a gloss lacquer right here. Gives it such a more polished look. I like the side profile shot over here. So you get the binding that goes all the way across the neck. Kind of similar to how Fender does it. Then you get a nice combination of colors. Red, kind of a little bit of brown. You got the ebony and white. And now we can move on to the back. A lot more of the same stuff, but we do have our two 9 volt battery controls. So that's right, you do need two of them. But if you're curious what it looks like in there, it's all finished over. And you can actually see one of the screws from the bridge poking through. That's funny. But those just pop up right there. And we've got our output jack on the side. One strap button here. Another one at the top of the horn. What I'm really digging about the Stingray is the fact that it's so rounded. You've got a nice little comfort carve right here, but I'm talking like the actual edges of the base. It's very round. I especially love this. It's not necessarily like a cutaway. I mean, yeah, they've kind of softened it right there, but it's just how this almost looks like one continuous piece of wood that's with the neck and it's just been softly sculpted. I mean, it's just out of your way. There's nothing uncomfortable about this heel joint. It's just perfect. Personally, I'm very impressed by that. And apparently this is supposed to be a gunstock oil neck. So that kind of gives it this whole satin feel. That's a nice neck. And again, it's crazily figured. We did really well on this. I had uh, sent him some pictures of this saying, hey, yeah, we didn't end up getting the one that we were supposed to. But yeah, he was pretty excited for this one just as much as I was. So, I mean, that's just a good neck. A happy accident. And here's the backside of this headstock and our little California bear up here. All said and done, this one weighs 7 pounds, 14.8 ounces, so just shy of 8. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. Now please do keep in mind, I do not have a proper bass amp. This is just going straight into Logic Pro, and we'll run through the active EQ system, as well as play with some effects on there. <laughs>
probably know all about the Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray limited edition color. What are my final thoughts on this one? I definitely enjoy getting to check this thing out. It balances pretty well on a strap and it just makes it so you kind of gravitate towards like the first and 12th fret. I didn't ever see myself needing to go up here, but if you need to, it's nice that we have all these cutaways and it's just a gorgeous neck. There's definitely an aesthetic thing to picking out your favorite guitar and or bass to play. And this one, it's got a bunch of different tones that you can squeeze out of it through your amp or just your onboard EQ effects system. So I'll be the first to admit that it was probably not the best demo in the world, but I did my best as a non-bass player. So Traveler Knights, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.